Hi, I'm Mathieu from ShapeDiver. Welcome to this new series of ShapeDiver tutorials. Uh, so in case you came here by accident, just a few words about ShapeDiver. Uh, ShapeDiver is an online platform where you can upload your grasshopper definitions and turn them into visual interfaces online. So you can go right now up to app.shapediver.com and you can already see some example models that our users uploaded, like this one, for example, and you'll get the ID. Um, after the models are uploaded on the platform, they are turned into a visual interface online uh, based on WebGL. And the models come with all their parameters. You can see them on the sides. You have all the value lists, uh, the sliders, the, the toggles, everything's here. And anyone can interact with them without, without the use of any software installed. So that's the idea of the, of the service. Obviously, this is already a pretty complex model, but you'll see that the process of preparing and uploading a model to the platform is very straightforward. Uh, putting your first model online can be done in minutes. In fact, you might already have definitions that are 100% ready to be uploaded without any more work. So just a quick word of warning before we get started. Uh, this tutorial is not ready for you if you're not familiar at all with Grasshopper. You don't need to be an advanced user, but I won't spend too much time explaining basic Grasshopper concepts. There's a lot of ex excellent tutorials online that do just that. For example, check out Andrew Human's recent series. I'll link to it uh, in the description of the video. So in this first video, I'd like to keep things very simple. You might have heard about the ShapeDiver plugin for Grasshopper, for example. Uh, and sure enough, we'll cover its functionalities in detail in the following tutorials. But when we created ShapeDiver, we really wanted the service to be compatible with plain Grasshopper definitions and to keep the learning curve to a minimum. So for that reason, we'll keep it to standard Grasshopper components in this video, and instead I'll focus on what makes a definition compatible or not with ShapeDiver. In other words, I'll just go over the basic rules you need to follow when building your definition. The goal is to build a shared understanding of how the platform works, and that way most of the rules will not seem so arbitrary, but more like common sense. All right, let's get started then. As I promised, we can use most of the standard Grasshopper components. So let's start with the box, for example. I always like starting with a box. And a slider, just to make it a bit more interesting. Parametric. And that's it. This definition, for example, is compatible with ShapeDiver. And it can be uploaded without problems. So you can use most of the standard inputs. Uh, sliders, value lists, toggles, all the color pickers. And if you want to use the, the more exotic ones, like multi-dimensional sliders, gradient, graph mapper, they, they'll be compatible uh, and you can upload the files, but you just won't be able to access these, these inputs from the, from the online interface. <coughs> so I'll just save this simple definition called cube, for example. You can save it as GH or GHX. Of course, GH uh, produces smaller files. So it's a bit uh, faster to upload. So then we can go to the platform. Uh, if you didn't already, you can create an account. It takes one minute, it's free. And you can access the upload uh, screen where you can pick your file or drag and drop it directly on the page. And then you can you know, set a few things like the title, the description, and and other uh, parameters that we'll look uh, at in a different tutorial, but for now we'll just go straight to publish. And then that's when you see that our servers will take a few seconds to process your model. Uh, they check that everything works, is compatible. And once, once it's done, you'll finally see uh, your model online for the first time uh, with all its parameters accessible from the interface and voila so we'll go over the the different options you have in the online interface in a in, in a later tutorial but for now i'd just like to go back to grasshopper and look at some important points so the first important thing to look at is the the preview in grasshopper everything that gets previewed uh, will also be rendered in the online viewer so at each step of the design, we must make sure that only what needs to be shown is also previewed 
uh, from Grasshopper. That's a pretty standard thing to also pay attention to for any sort of Grasshopper work because it gets really messy when everything is previewed. So, for example, let's say we want to twist this box, right? So I'm going to define an axis for twisting along the along the center of the box. Uh, so the Z axis. Right, so from minus one to one, and an angle between zero and zero point five pi. Um, here we go. Right, so here we can even barely see what's happening because the box, the initial box, is still visible. So we need to hide it as well as the line, for example, the construction line that defines the, the twisting axis. So a good rule is basically to select everything, hide everything, so by clicking on Solution, Preview Selected Off, and then only activate um, the preview for what we really want to see. So in this case, I'm, I make sure that only the twisted box is visible in uh, my definition. And that's going to be the case online as well. All right, so now I can try to upload this new file. Let's just go again to the upload screen. All right, so this time I have a twisted cube. I'm going to publish it. And first of all, we'll make sure that everything works fine as we expected. So now we'll see that we have a model with two parameters uh, the initial uh, dimension of the box that we defined previously and the angle for the twist. And we can already see that, well, in terms of functionality, this uh, definition works as, as expected. But when I twist the cube um, in a pretty extreme way, we can see some visual artifacts, right? And that obviously comes from the meshing of the cube, uh, which leads us to the next point that I wanted to, to discuss, um, which is meshing. So in this case, the twisted cube that we output is a, is a BREP. And just like in Rhino, when you output BREP to the online viewer, they need to be meshed uh, at a point. And basically, it's better if, if you mesh manually in Grasshopper because then you have control over uh, how detailed the mesh will be. In that case, in the Grasshopper preview, you, we can't really see um, how the render, rendered view will be. But if I switch to rendered in, Grass in, in Rhino, sorry, I can see that I have the same problem than in Chip Diver, right? So it's always a good um, a good idea to to bake uh, your geometry and and use the rendered view in Rhino so that you have a good idea of how good the, the meshing is. But in general, I would recommend to uh, do the meshing directly uh, in the definition when when it makes sense. So in that case, I'm gonna mesh the B rep. Um, and let's look again. So here, if I just mesh without any settings, it's going to be pretty much the same problem. I need, I need to basically define some meshing settings that are going to ensure that I um, don't end up with these long, thin faces that produce artifacts. So in our case, I think the idea is to limit the ratio of the faces. So uh, angle aspects, yeah, maximum allowed ratio. Let's say, let's be a bit extreme and say one. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that this mesh will be rendered correctly, even even with with a pretty extreme twist. So in that case, we're all good. I can try to upload that file again.
twisted cube two. Publish. And hopefully we get also um, a visually satisfying mesh uh, in the online viewer. All right, that's better. So it's always uh, a little bit of a, of a compromise because obviously uh, a more refined mesh will produce better visual results, but it's also uh, much bigger. So it's longer to download and it makes the, the viewer slower. So there's always a bit of a, of a balance to find between a refined mesh and a mesh that is light enough to provide a good experience once the model is online. You should also consider the fact that meshing inside Grasshopper uh, can take a while, especially if the geometry is complex. So you might want to avoid that uh, depending on your application. Uh, a long computation time will hurt the user experience uh, in the online model and it could also um, hit the limit of your accounts. Shape Diver free accounts are limited to five seconds. So whenever possible, you should start working with meshes from the beginning or uh, internalize meshes when it makes sense. Which leads me to the last point I wanted to cover today, uh, which is the fact that a lot of Grasshopper designers uh, work with a Rhino session and reference objects from a Rhino session. But when you upload a model on Shape Diver, you can only upload the Grasshopper file. So everything that is referenced and outside of the Grasshopper file will be lost in the upload process, uh, typically. So let's say if I uh, have a, se a session in Grasshopper with an object, for example, a torus like this, and I reference this object in my definition, I can save this file and upload it, it's gonna work, uh, but the torus will be lost, it will not be displayed because the information to display it is not contained in the definition. The way to solve this is to right click on anything that should be internalized and click on internalize data. In that sense, you will separate the objects from your Rhino session from, from the definition and internalize inside the definition the information about them. So this version of the definition, I can even delete now my object from, from Rhino, and I can save this file and in this case everything uh, will be displayed from, from the Grasshopper definition. So this is just one example of many instances where you might reference a local work sessions or local files. So for example, all the components like the image sampler, which uh, references uh, a local uh, file path, or all the import components. Uh, so import a 3DM file, import image, import PDB, all of this. Uh, obviously, for obvious reason, will not be compatible with ShapeDiver because they all reference a local path. We'll see in future tutorials that the ShapeDiver plugin provides alternatives to its components that make more sense in the context of online applications. But for now, that's what I wanted to cover today. Um, there are a couple more rules that I'll cover in a future video because they are more advanced, uh, but you should already be able to do a lot uh, with following these few principles that, that we looked at today. And yeah, ne the next video I would like to cover an important point, which is how to play with materials and rendering to get your first really nice looking models uh, online on ShapeDiver. So thanks for listening and see you next time.